And so, to begin the first of many different recordings which were given by the great Lung Po La Si or Lung Po Lu Si Ling Dam of Wat Tha Sung uh, in Uthai Thani, who was the first Luxit, the first uh, apprentice uh, to his Kuba Ajan. So he was the Luxit Ek, first apprentice to Lung Po Pan of Wat Bang Nom Ko to Dong Master. And uh, these teachings, there are 12 teachings, 12 recordings, which I am going to translate as best I can. Not translate uh, word for word, but translate their meaning in understandable modern language in English. And try to transmit what he communicates in his 12 teachings, each of which are about 25 minutes long per teaching in Thai and explain about the four kinds of noble persons, the Arya Sangha, Arya Song, in the eight different stages. So there are four kinds of enlightened beings, or noble beings, pure beings, uh, reaching towards the ultimate of Arahantship, so uh, and beginning with uh, the stream enterer, the Sotapanna. Mm. These four states are the Sotapanna, the stream enterer, uh, the Sakitakami, the once returner, and the Anakami, the never returner, and the Arahan, the fully enlightened being. And each of these four kinds of beings has a path and a fruit, which means when you have entered the path, that you will become a stream enterer, a Sotapanna, then you are not yet a Sotapanna, but you have entered a path. You have entered the stream to become an arahant and once you have begun this path usually well almost as far as i know always you will complete the path you won't fail and once you pass this point then you have entered the soda patimak the path of the soda banner and when you complete the fruition of all of the things which would make you imaginably classifiable as a stream enterer, fully fru- full fruition, you would have cut three of ten fetters. Yeah? So the Sotapanna has fetters and all of the first three of the four enlightened beings will still have some subtle fetters, but ever less as the person progresses, as the practitioner progresses and enters the stream in the path of the Soda Banner, attains the fruit of the Soda Banner, and then simultaneously, of course, begins to enter the stream of the path of the Sagitakami, the once returner, and so on. And so Lumpoli Silingdam explains not only what these are, but he explains what the mood and the thoughts and reactions how it is to be each of these eight different stages or each of the different stages along the way, which really there's just one progressive line, but it's for sake of explanation that this has been formulated. And uh, I'd like to translate it now. So we will begin with Lumpolu Sees Lingdam's explanation of entering the path of the Sotapanna, the first stage of enlightenment. So I shall begin now to translate his teaching. Good evening, everybody who has come to practice. This evening we shall begin the teaching for all of those who wish to practice the way of accessing stream entry in the Sotapatimak the Sotapatimaka, the path of the stream enterer. The Lord Buddha gave his teachings with the purpose of helping the people to understand, helping all beings to understand and to enter the path, the Arya Mak and the Arya Pon the path to the cessation of all suffering, the makkah, and to achieve the access to stream entry and eventually attain nibbana through becoming arahants. 
this was the purpose and is the purpose of the Buddha's teaching. If we just practice aimlessly and in our own fashion, then we will never really be able to attain any fruits from it. And in order to practice and attain any fruits, one needs some method, some secret or some, some applied method of practice with which to manifest those results. And this is missing in many teachings of Vipassana and teachings of how to practice the Aryamak, how to practice the Eightfold Path to become a noble person. The first level which the Lord Buddha would lead the practitioner and the seeker towards is of course the path of the stream enterer the Sodapatimak, the Sodapatimaka in Thai Sodapatimak, in Pali Sodapatimaka uh, and of course the Sodapatipon, Sodapatipala uh, the fruit of Sodapana or just Sodapanahood to bring you to Sodapanahood stream entry the path and the fruit so before you study anything else at the beginning here you should understand that the Sodaban the Sodapana stream enterer has rid himself of three of the Sanyodjana the Sanyod in Thai the three of the ten fetters fetters are like chains which hold us captive so there are three fetters which the Sotapanna has more or less uh, abandoned and so to become a Sotapanna one has to work towards trying to achieve the abandonment of at least these three fetters the first fetter I will talk about is Sakayatiti, the self-identification view, identifying or taking things personally and find self-seeking in things. This is my party, this is my good mood, you have ruined my good mood and all of these kind of views we have where we take things for me or mine, which is a false view. Uh, the Sotapanna has abandoned this fetter but I must, and not as Lumpolu Sealing Dam, as a John Spencer, intercede here to add that actually the total abandonment of the belief in a self and self identification comes at the end with arahantship. And so to say that the stream entry has abandoned the self identification view, I have to say that to a certain level and that each other stage of enlightenment will refine the abandonment of that view to an ever more subtle level until it is completely annihilated which is of course the end of the cause of rebirth and the end of the cause of suffering and liberation and Lung Porusi continues to say that uh, the Sodapana has abandoned this first fetter of self-identification to the point where he knows he has to die and he knows in this sense his body is not his forever but he still will want things for himself so he must still have a small amount of identity view he may still wish to be rich or have a nice wife beautiful wife and nice house and be successful uh, so he will still possess these kinds of uh, wishes and desires and therefore the intentions to achieve those goals too but perhaps his sila his his precepts won't let him use immoral means to attain those goals but and so he knows that death cannot be avoided and he knows very clearly in his mind every day constantly that death can come at any time he might die in the morning when he wakes up or before he wakes up. He might die in his sleep after he's gone to sleep or in the afternoon or the evening or even when he's eating his meal. He knows this very clearly in a different way to 
a normal person to an average person. But the Sotapanna, the stream enterer, he still only has a small amount of panya, of uh, true illuminated wisdom, of real intelligence and circumspection. And so this about the only thing he knows of, the, of abandoning the self-identification view, this first fetter, is that he must die. Mm. Now his body is five khandas, huh? Rup, Vetana, Sanya, Sankar, Vinyan, forms, feelings, perception and memory, uh, thought formations and consciousness, and he knows he has to die. But he is still not able to, or she, the Sotapanna, Stream Entera, is still not able to uh, look at the body of these five aggregates of the body of Rup, Vetana, Sanya, Sankar, Vinyan, Rupa, Vetana, Sanya, Sankara and Vijnana, mm, form, feelings, perception, mem slash memory, uh, thought formations and consciousness. He just thinks of it as the body. He has not yet meditated and contemplated the five aggregates which compose his body and taken them apart to find there is no self in them. He has not realized not self and abandoned the self-identity view to that level yet. He only has a small amount of illuminated wisdom and so he can only see that he must die and his body is not his but he still thinks his, his, he is his body to, in a different sense so he's not fully enlightened yet but he has begun the abandoning of this fetter to a much greater extent than the normal samsaric dream thinking being who is asleep he has begun to wake up. The Sotapanna also thinks that uh, the material possessions and belongings around him or her are his belongings. All of these things, they are mine. Sotapanna still has this concept and so of course in truth has not really destroyed the false view of a self with its own self-separateness and its own possessions. So he's only abandoned this fetter on the first level. He still thinks his possessions are his, he still thinks his body is his and it, this is me, but he knows he has to die. And that is the meaning of the abandonment of the first fetter of the Soda Banna. Doesn't mean he's fully abandoned it to the ultimate. It just means he knows he has to die and that he's very aware of that every day and it's something that will help him to be wise and skillful because it will cause him to think of impermanence but it's uh, early stages in enlightenment he also knows of course that uh, his possessions will wear out or get broken or that when he dies he will have to give them up but he still hasn't realized that it's they were never his in the beginning so there is a certain letting go of those material things but there is still a false view that those things are his possession so moving on to the second fetter which the Sotapanna has begun to abandon. You see, most teachings will say, has abandoned. You look at the teachings on paper and say he has abandoned them. But one has to understand, as there are four stages of enlightenment split into the path and the fruit of each stage, there are also different stages of abandonment because it is abandonment which brings enlightenment is one of the major keys is abandonment and so the abandonment of the stream enterer on the path of stream entry is less than the abandonment when he reaches the fruit and is even less than the abandonment of the one's returner on his path and even less than the one's returner on his fruit and that is still less than the never returner's path 
which is also less than the never returneth fruit, and all of them are much less than the path and the fruit of the arahant. And so, when we say the soda banna, the stream mantra, has abandoned three of the ten fetters, we have to realize that he has begun the path of abandonment of those three fetters. So that is the path of the soda banna, is when you begin to abandon these three fetters. When you finally abandoned all ten, then you have reached arahantship. The second fetter, which the soda banna has abandoned, is vichikicca, um, doubt or suspicions. He has abandoned or destroyed or does not possess any doubt or suspicion, which means he has full faith in the truth of the Buddha Dhamma and the Lord Buddha's enlightenment. The stream enterer, the Sodabana, has full faith in the um, commands of the Buddha and of the Buddha's teachings. By the word commands, uh, we mean his recommendations and by uh, his teachings we mean the Dhamma, the Buddha Dhamma. By his recommendations we mean uh, the sila, uh, the, pre the, the precepts of conduct. And by precepts we mean actually uh, abandoning, abandoning the things mentioned in the precepts. So if we say the five precepts, Bhanati Bhata, where a manisi kabatang samati yami, I will refra refrain from killing and harming other living beings, then we are refraining, we are abandoning. And if we say, kame uh, sumi chajara, for example, where a manisi kabatang samati yami, I will, this is the third one, the third precept. Uh, I will refrain from adulterous behavior and perverse behavior and that which is not auspicious um, sexual or promiscuous behavior then one is refraining and abandoning something mm, intoxicants or lying or stealing and killing and so on if you're a monk you have 227 which is, might be a thousand actually reduced so it is all actually about abandonment. And so the Sotapanna has no doubts and has full confidence and uh, total belief, faith in the truth of the Buddha's enlightenment and in his teachings and in his recommendations that if you don't do this, if you refrain from these things and that if you cultivate these things, Refrain from these things and bad things won't happen so much and you'll be happier. And if you cultivate and do more of these things and do this, then you will attain ultimate happiness and liberation. And the Sotapanna has full faith in this and no doubt. So he has abandoned this fetter of Vichikicca. And of course, because of the teachings of the Buddha being perfect, then the Sodapanna also has full faith in those beings who have attained stream entry and above right up to Arahantship, which is the meaning of Sangha, the, the third aspect of the Triple Gem, the Buddha, his teachings and the Sangha, those noble persons who have already entered the stream and onwards or have become arahants or anakami or sagitakami once returners never returners or arahants believes in their existence and has faith and reverence for them believes in the buddha dhamma the truth and uh, indestructible qualities of the dhamma which are timeless agaligo and in the truth of the buddha's enlightenment and that his teachings are true that's the triple gem and uh, the Sotapanna, the stream enterer, has full faith, full knowledge of the truth of the existence of these three things and full reverence. And the Sotapanna 
therefore having confidence in the recommendations and the ordinances of the Buddha has pure sila, has uh, precepts and does not break his or her precepts. Otherwise, in an outward sense, from looks and behavior, you will not notice anything and a sodapanna, sodapa, sodapan, a sodapanna stream enterer will uh, appear just more or less like any other normal person and live his or her life uh, in a normal fashion, but within precepts, with only uh, moral conduct and no immoral conduct but that within the heart and the consciousness of the Sotapanna throughout the day uh, there will always be one thing dwelling within the, the mood within the heart and the mind something kind of underlying of an underlying sensation within I would say Arum Fang Jai Nung Paul says Arum Mi Arum Ning Fang Jai there is a constantly embedded, uh, not an attitude, but a, a constantly embedded knowledge or mood present throughout his experience, throughout the day and night. A constant feeling of respect and love and reverence for the Buddha, and the same respect and love and reverence for the Dhamma and for the Sangha, for those beings who have meritoriously attained stream entry and onwards. And he has pure sila, sinha bodhisud, uh, is the fourth thing in his heart that, uh, and this is perhaps the hardest thing to sustain to become a sotapanna is that if let's say his this this particular sotapanna his precept is that he will never drink alcohol because he fears the unskillfulness and the the results from it that perhaps if you put a gun to his head this isn't the policy ling dam speaking this is ajahn spencer interceding again so you can mm, check this out for yourself if this is true because this is my thoughts that if you put a gun against the head of a sotapanna and tell him to break a precept he will choose to die before he will break that precept because of the constant awareness he has of the Buddha, the Dhamma and the Sangha and of his precepts and of the Makkha of the path he is walking and so that's one way to check yourself. If no, you don't have a Kruba Ajahn to check you, is, uh, um, would I be willing to do that? And if the answer is no, then you're not a Sotapanna yet, in my opinion. But Lumbolusi doesn't say that. So just take that one with a pinch of salt and contemplate it. And it is said that the Sotapanna and the Sagita Kami both have seen Borisod, pure Sila. But later, perhaps, we'll refine the difference between the purity of the sila of each, if any. And uh, it is said that the Sodapanna, he is still subject to the three mind poisons, lop, krod, long, lopa, is uh, greed, krod, anger, or harmful mindedness, and long, um, ignorance. So Lob, he's, because he still wants to be rich and uh, long, he might like something and want to buy it or he might f fall in love for something, he still have, have uh, Kram Lak uh, enjoy, uh, love things, be enchanted by things and be, be, be enticed by things long ignorance fall into enchantments but of things he sees physical objects pretty things expensive things sorry expensive things so he has long he has ignorance and uh, he will still experience anger 
But it is said here that a stream enterer will not express anger, it will not become an utterance from his mouth, or it will not go and hit somebody, or, or will not break his precepts of harmful behavior, no harmful behavior, ahingsagam of non violence, or anything like that. And so he will just feel it inside, kind of like holding a hot plate, but you can't let it go until you reach the table kind of thing so he will suffer that that's why he's not yet fully liberated and maybe the path this is not Lung Polusi I'm expanding again Ajahn Spencer that maybe the path of the Sodapana his sila are not as fully forged as when he has re reached the fruit of the Sodapana hmm? maybe the same is true for the fruit of the Sotapanna and the path of the Sagitakame of the once returner will also become ever more subtle and stronger. Mm. There is a legend about the Kukutamit Pram, a Brahman, who is said to have been a Sotapanna at the age of seven years old already. But in the end, when he grew up, he got married in fine robes to a rich Brahmin lady and had all of the fine uh, regal possessions and yet was a soda banner from the age of seven. This shows that a soda banner still desires things and is still enticed by the world like any other normal person and has just begun to abandon the first subtle levels of the three three of the ten fetters and so this would be the path of the stream entry which doesn't really sound so difficult does it that if you and this is uh, part of the point of Lumporusi's talks which he calls Gamfuk Arom Hai Kautin Kwam Pim Pra Arya Arya Beb Sukha Vipatsa Go which means the, how to train your mood to attain access to becoming an Arya, an enlightened being, using a happy and pleasant uh, steady method. It means kind of a, a, a pleasant way to do it without having to sit under a tree for 10 days, without eating or breathing or whatever, and to just slowly develop Vipassana and slowly develop the causes, the paths and the fruits, find the paths and attain the fruits of stream entry, which is the purpose of the Buddha's teaching and is what he was training people to do. Hmm? And so this is how to practice according to Lumpuru Sealing Dam, and this is how to understand what an enlightened being is so that you can try to become one. Because if you don't understand the mood, and what what an enlightened being thinks and feels and how he got there and what tricks he used on himself and herself to transform then it's going to be very hard isn't it and here's that's why we're here that's why we're translating and listening to this and so a stream enterer wants all the things a normal person wants but is in the scene Sila. So will not uh, go with somebody else's wife, or if he's married, will not have a lover outside of the marriage, will not steal to get what he wants, or lie to get what he wants or she wants. And so, if you're a salesman and the product you're selling, if you can, if you lie to make the sale, then you're not a soda banner because a soda banner would never lie to make the sale and would lose the sale rather than lie but would probably give a very good if intelligent and a good salesman would give a very good sales pitch selling the things he believes in of the product but not deliberately avoiding the customer seeing something that might not sell a product, just not getting involved in any evasive behavior or uh, immoral or dishonest, anything that would break his sila. Mm. And so wanting everything 
a nice pretty wife, a nice house, successful profession, nice car, be handsome, fine food, stuff like this. These things are mine, just like everybody else. But he's Sila. He knows he has to die. He has full faith in the triple gem. And his Sila are unbreakable. They will not break. And this is the first path to for stage the path of the first stage of enlightenment this tree mentor still feels angry and feels offended and takes things personally which proves the remaining remnants of some self-identity view when we take things personally so the first fetter is abandoned to a certain extent but he still feels anger but he won't go out and kill somebody because of that anger he won't uh, commit a harmful act and so even though the anger is inside he will not drive him to break his sila and the sodaban he still has long things that will make desire arise things he will fall in love with things he will become enticed by but they won't make him forget that he has to die and that in the end they are impermanent and so he won't break his sila for that and so if we think we can develop our precepts to the point where it's more easy to not want to break them than it is to feel tempted by them and we can attain this then perhaps to become a stream enterer is not that difficult and so says Lung Po Lucy that for this lesson Lung Po Lucy would like the students to uh, contemplate make it a uh, second nature to contemplate uh, death and the finality of death and the unavoidability of death and to make this present in their minds because it will make you more aware of your skillful and unskillful acts and it will bring make raise your mindfulness in the first level mm. of vipassana and the first level of awakening and the first level of stream entry which is what the lesson is about when you are thinking of death and the the truth of death is present in the mind it makes us more careful and it makes us careful to not be unskillful and it makes us mindful that we should be skillful we can use thinking about the imminence and unavoidability and we don't know when it's coming these facts about death to get rid of uh, worry and stress and anger and fear and focus our minds so on the day when we cannot focus then just think of that and it soon brings you back to focusing and that when we think of the imminent death before us and we look at the unskillful acts in our lives in the past and the present that we should really uh, admonish ourselves with the words it is I this person who is truly selfish it is I who am evil and not good because if we think in this way we will be able to admit our wrongs to ourselves, and we will be able to dig them up and face them and let's not Ajahn Spencer interceding again that self-forgiveness is also part of abandoning the ill deeds of the past and this is uh, I'm sure Lung Po has taught about this but not in this one I'm translating but I will intercede with the the uh, samapatansi, the four exertions which means to abandon the bad karma of the past 
and to um, sustain the good deeds of the past and to create good karma by good deeds in the f present and future and to um, avoid unskillful acts in the present and future and so abandoning the ill deeds of the past is one of these four exertions to do this you need to forgive yourself that when you have stopped and you have taken your sila and your precepts and you begin to keep them you can then begin to abandon the ill deeds of the past by never doing them again and you can begin to reduce them by creating good deeds now and in the future so do good and avoid doing bad is the way to destroy the bad of the past and to sustain the good deeds of the past you do all four by two things doing good and not doing bad being skillful and not being unskillful that is how to leave the past ill deeds behind but we should think until now I have been truly naughty I have been truly selfish and look why where and how and one should see that this self-identity view is our enemy and so this is a thought one should it's a hard thought but it's one of the most useful tools in self-advancement that if you can be hard on yourself with it it's a knife that cuts and it hurts but it's an incision that it's an operation that can heal you of impurity most people have seen animals die on the TV or in the slaughterhouse or seen them in pieces in the butcher's shop and Many people may have been to a funeral or seen an animal or a person die or seen a dead body. But very few people really think they themselves one day will be a corpse like the ones we see in a funeral. The Buddha therefore recommended that we to think about death as a constant background mode to always have this contemplation present and this will make us decide not to be unskillful in life because if we think we aren't going to die then we are thinking wrong and we might do something wrong contemplation of death is a key method which can make access to stream entry uh, make stream entry much more easily accessible to you the practitioner and for this Lumpolusi tells the story of the Pratsakari Tida princess who came to see the Buddha who was somebody who had the reverence and respect and faith uh, undoubtable destroyed all doubts in the enlightenment of the Buddha and in the truth of his Dhamma and the existence of Sangha enlightened beings for the Buddha himself was Sangha he was enlightened therefore there are enlightened Sangha and she believed in these and she had most of these requirements the basis for soda panahood for stream entry but was uh, and uh, she went to see the buddha and the buddha received her in conversation and the sakari tida was in the in the town of arawi and the buddha traveled on tudong to arawi on his own and sat there uh, nearby on a, a tree trunk under a tree uh, and meditated and remained there and when the local people heard that the Buddha was present in the area in the forest of course many people went to sit in his attendance and to make offerings of patahan of food to give alms 
and of course the Sakari Tida, who was, uh, she was the daughter of an artisan actually. I think he might have been a, a court artisan, uh, not sure. Uh, also travelled to where the Buddha was residing to make offerings. After the Buddha had received his arms and eaten, he then gave a Dhamma sermon to the local devotees, which was quite short and in basis uh, gave the teaching to not be unskillful in life because the lifespan is uncertain and because death is certain. And so he told them that whatever you do each day, you should always remember Whatever I do, I still have to die at the end, and I don't know when that will be. And so, I had better do good things instead of bad things, so I won't regret it at the end. If I only do selfish deeds, then perhaps I will be reborn in unfavorable circumstances. Even if I am reborn as a human, there is only birth, death, aging, loss of relatives and possessions and health and youth and in the end suffering, sadness and cessation. One should not think, oh next year or in ten years from now or maybe next month, maybe I'll die, because even that you don't know. It might be even in a few seconds, and nobody can tell. So one should always be prepared and mindful. One should think, I might die within the next few minutes or today. After the Buddha finished his sermon, uh, the, the people of the town went back home and the Buddha returned to his Vihara where he was residing and the Devata, the Devas, the angelic in, uh, celestial and uh, spirits and Devas who had been listening to the teaching of the Buddha in the forest followed the Buddha back to the Vihara but the Sakari Tida, the young girl after she went back, after receiving the sermon, she thought of the Buddha and saw his face in her mind every day and was contemplating his teaching all the time for she was highly interested in his teaching. She kept thinking of the Buddha's teaching that life span is uncertain and that death is certain and that one should be skillful and do good deeds and she remembered this every day and made great efforts to do good deeds and to avoid doing bad deeds and to sustain her mindfulness in the uncertainty of life and the certainty of death. She followed all of the recommendations of the Buddha from his sermon and this caused her behavior and practice to fulfill the precepts and to maintain the precepts of not killing, no harmful acts against others, no harmful speech or lying or speech to cause schisms, um, no adulterous or wrongful uh, perverse sexual behavior, no intoxication to make oneself unskillful and so on and so on because you can have many more precepts such as not touching money or whatever but whatever her precepts were she kept them and uh, because following these recommendations of practice will keep one within the sila the precepts she had both Bhutan Utsati Gamatan which is the constant mindfulness of the Buddha and his teachings and his enlightenment and uh, Marana Nunsati Gamatan the constant mindfulness of the certainty of death 
and she held both of these things in her mind throughout the day and night in her daily life and practice. She was void of doubt of the teachings of the Buddha and fully convinced of his enlightenment and hence also revered him as Sangha and was therefore fully in reverence and in faith of the triple gem of Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha and had all three aspects of the triple gem in her mind throughout the day with great reverence to as the shining light to guide her in her practice and keep her mindful. Despite thinking about death constantly, she was not depressed, she was happy because she realized it made her more skillful and that it was freeing her from unskillful acts and is therefore a path to heaven, so to speak. She knew that her mother was dead already and perhaps one day soon, any time she might not know, her father would die or she herself might even die before him, for death is uncertain. But she also knew that before I die, I can choose to be a good person or a bad person. And which of those I choose is of great importance because I know not how long I have to live. And yes, when I die, I might even become a ghost. But at least if I did good deeds, then I will probably be a happy ghost or a peaceful ghost even if I don't have a new body. And so she was not unhappy or depressed because she saw the value of knowing the uncertainty of life and the certainty of death and saw some kind of um, happiness in finding a path to goodness through it and having attained mindfulness through it for this indeed is a joy in itself for it is part of the process of waking up so the first time she had heard the sermon of the buddha and went back to practice in her life she was 13 years old the next time she had a chance to hear the buddha was three years later when she was 16 years old. And this time, when the congregation came, the Buddha was meditating and he was investigating the state of mind and heart of the congregation one by one, using his special abilities as an enlightened being. And as he scanned the congregation, he came across a mind and a heart of the Sakari Tida, who was 16 years old, and he stopped. And he became aware that after the sermon, this girl was going to be killed in an accident. He saw the future. And he thought to himself, if I don't help her, then will she have enough sati, enough mental focus to be able to die well? In Thai, Lung Po Lusi says that if the Buddha didn't help her, her kati is not certain. Kati means um, where she's going after death. So sukati, a happy place, or tukati, a state of suffering or sukati, a state of because we're, we are a state not a place, a state of suffering or a state of bliss or a state of happiness was uncertain if the Buddha did not help her along her way that it would be uncertain if she would be born as a hell being or as a, a, a hungry ghost or an animal or a human or a jealous god, a demigod, or as a, a celestial intelligence, angelic being, with or without form, a Brahma, or a Rupa, a Rupa Brahma, and Rupa Brahma, or where she would go, was uncertain. And so how do you think the Buddha 
helped her? How could he help her? The Buddha saw that if he asked the uh, the girl a kata, he formulated a kata of four questions, and that he if he asked the girl the formula of four questions, that when she had answered in public all four questions, she would dapan she would become she would attain stream entry to the, the she would attain the path of the stream entra or the fruit of the stream entra I'm not sure that she would attain attain stream entry and this would save her because it is said that a stream entra will be born one to seven times I believe and will never be born as a hell being or a hungry ghost or a demigod, jealous god or an animal will only be born as a human or a deva and within those three to seven lifetimes rebirths will attain nibbana will attain liberation from suffering and so this was the Buddha's solution to help this girl for she was indeed going to die that very evening the Buddha saw that if she became a Sotapanna and entered the stream, then if she, when she died she would be reborn in the Dusita, the Shandusit, uh, the Dusit level of the celestial realms, which is a heavenly realm, very pleasant. And so the Lord Buddha let the congregation call the girl to approach him and that he wanted to speak to her and so when she came and bowed and placed herself in his attendance he began to ask her the four riddles or the four questions the first question was Terma Jagnai where do you come from where have you come from and her answer was I do not know my lord and so the Buddha asked again, And where are you going? And the girl answered, I do not know, my lord. And the Buddha then asked, You don't know? And the girl answered, I know. The Buddha then asked her, Oh, you know? Do you? And the girl answered, I don't know. The meaning of the first question, where did you come from, was I don't know, because she didn't know who she was in the previous life or anything that happened before she was born, because she couldn't remember. And so she said, I don't know where I come from. The second question was, where are you going? Which she answered by saying, I don't know. The meaning of this was that when she dies, when she dies, she doesn't know. And where she goes after she dies in the next life, she also does not know. And so her answer was, I do not know, my Lord. And the third question was, oh, you don't know. Huh? The answer was, I know. She answered, I know, because when he said, when the Buddha said, oh, you don't know where you're going, she answered, although I don't know where I'm going, I do know I'm going to die, and death is certain, and that I do know. And so her answer to the third question was, I know. And so with the fourth question, when the Buddha said, Oh, you know about death, do you? Then the girl answered, No, I don't know. Because she didn't know if she's going to die in the morning, the evening, or the afternoon, or on which day. And so her answer to the fourth question was, I don't know. 
the Buddha then saw that her confidence in these matters was strong enough that she had attained sotapannahood and she had entered the stream. But in truth, actually, even before speaking with the Buddha and realizing these answers, she had already entered the path of stream entry because she already thought about death. She already had complete faith and confidence in the Triple Gem and knowledge of the truth of the Buddha's enlightenment, of his teachings and of his purity as Sangha and uh, had been practicing within the sila, within the precepts. Uh, this is the path towards stream entry. And so this person, this girl, had already attained Sodapatimaka, the path of the Sodapana, beforehand in the time between the Buddha's first sermon and this second conversation with the uh, four-lined kata series of questions. And on answering these four questions, uh, the young girl became attained the fruition of the stream enterer. You see, in the time from the first sermon she heard of the Buddha, she had thought constantly of death and the certainty of death and therefore cultivated her uh, intention to act skillfully and auspiciously and to avoid inauspicious and unskillful acts which had begun to this was the beginning of uh, the accumulation of the causes of stream entry by beginning this practice and secondly she uh, think of Buddha Nutsati, so the first is Marana Nutsati, mindfulness of death, of, of the proximity and the certainty of death, which makes you more skillful through being mindful of it. The second, which she had practiced from the first sermon in the three years up to the next conversation with the Buddha, uh, she also practiced Buddha Nutsati, Buddha Nutsati, uh, mindfulness of her of the Buddha, the Dhamma and the Sangha and complete confident faith, knowledge of the Buddha's enlightenment, the truth of his Dhamma and the true Sangha and the reverence for all three aspects of the Triple Gem. Practicing constant mindfulness of the Dhamma, of impermanence and that all things are impermanent and not able to be sustained and death is certain which is also a proof of impermanence and to cultivate the intention to remain mindful and skillful and to sustain sati sampatanya to never let it slip from the mind to to endeavor to increase one's uh, power to sustain attention, mm, sati, sampachanya is the sustaining of it, sati is the attention, to keep a focused attention, use the breath or your an, any anchor to keep mindful of what is happening inside, how the mind is wandering and to know one's moods and to be mindful of death that wakes you up. Mm. And so to, she contemplated the Dhamma and this also created causes of uh, stream entry. And of course, because of the mindfulness of remaining skillful, this made it easy to let the sustenance of the sustaining of the precepts, the not breaking of the precepts, because mindfulness will always warn us it serves serves as an alarm clock or an alarm that kicks off when we are in danger of being unskillful once we have taught ourselves what unskillful acts are what leads to regret is unskillful and so uh, she she 
cultivated her precepts. And in these three years, through practicing marana nunsati, uh, or mindfulness of the certainty of death in every moment, and putanunsati, in mindfulness in the Buddha and his teachings, and confidence and uh, in those beings which who have attained stream entry and beyond. Oh, she has held this in her mind and also kept the sila. And with these practices she had already prepared the path and entered the path of the stream enterer until three years later when she met the Buddha. And the Buddha uh, put the cream on the coffee by asking her these four riddles which she answered correctly and which pondering upon them caused her to complete and attain the fruition of Sotapanahood and the Buddha declared her a Sotapanna. And so Lumpo Rusi Lingdam then runs out of time in this first lesson and says to the congregation that if you all are to practice stream entry access uh, you should perhaps think of yourselves like the Pratsakari Tida, the young girl who is in the story and think about what her feelings and mind thoughts were in her practice and look at your own feelings and thoughts and see if you can look at yourself as the Sakari Tida, who has heard the teachings of the Buddha and you take them with you for a while and you practice them and see if you can make this mood and feeling inside your second nature and try to incorporate this kind of attitude into your practice in your daily life throughout the day not just in a meditation room or in a prayer room or when you visit the temple and listen but throughout the day and try to cultivate the mindfulness of remaining skillful, attentive with attention on your inner thoughts and feelings and the teachings of the Buddha and the respect for the Buddha and the Dharma and the Sangha just like the Sakari Tida, the young girl and to be mindful and to practice the sila, the precepts and see, notice how being mindful of the proximity and certainty of death if you practice like the Sakari Tida will see how it will make it much easier to not break the precepts because it will make you more careful and skillful and you'll be less tempted because the, the certainty of death makes them much less attractive and it becomes easy and so if you play the role of the Sakari Tida and use her story to practice and you can see that even a person like her was declared a stream enterer by the Buddha yeah and so if you can do these few basic simple things then perhaps you too can become a stream enterer and with this I would say we should all give great reverence to the Buddha Papichitama the conqueror of Mara upon the achiever of the ten perfections for the Dhamma that has allowed Lumpolu Si Ling Dham to give this explanation that is very hard to find in Dhamma teachings of how to actually understand what an enlightened being is in the first stage and to have some little special tricks to actually apply the practice of trying to attain access to stream entry from Lumpuru Sealing Dam and so that somebody like me can find the Dhamma so I can come and translate it uh, we all have the Buddha and the Dhamma and the Sangha to thank for this the Sangha who have preserved and rewritten and translated and spread and maintained, sustained the Buddha Sasana that's all Buddha Dhamma Sangha so that's one thought we can use to maintain great reverence in the Triple Gem in Buddha Nunsati so you keep your mindfulness of the Buddha Dhamma Sangha and you keep your mindfulness of death 
and you use those two things to help you keep your mindfulness and your skillfulness in the sila, in the precepts. And with these three things, Lumporu, Sealing Dam, and I myself, Ajahn Spencer, we leave you. Ajahn uh, Lumporu, see from beyond the grave, and me in the moment alive, but some people listening to this in future might also be hearing me from beyond the grave, because I too will also die. Don't ever forget that, and you too. And keep our sila with marana nunsati, mindfulness of death, and keep our sila with putta nunsati, mindfulness of the triple gem. And myself, and from Lumpolu Sealing Dam, we wish you a good night, and may all beings be happy. Sajan Spencer signing off.